If you're just joining us, here are the eight things you need to know today. The community in Arundel is on alert after a third disturbing note was found inside a York County mailbox. The latest note turned up on Portland Road on Monday morning. It matches two others found last week on Ross Road in Kennebunk, where the person presumed to be responsible was caught on a security camera that you're looking at there. In your commitment 2014 coverage, voters are pitting Republican Bruce Poliquin against Democrat Emily Kane in the race for the second district congressional seat. WMTW News 8's Katie Thompson live in Lewiston this morning with more on the primary winners. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Megan. Republican Bruce Poliquin and Democrat Emily Kane will go head to head in November's election, both vying for Mike Michaud's open congressional seat. Former state uh, Treasurer Bruce Poliquin defeated Kevin Ray, taking 56% of the vote, with 79% of precincts reporting results. Poliquin, the more conservative candidate of the two, has a background in finance and touts a record of fiscal discipline as Maine State Treasurer. On the Democratic side, first term State Senator Emily Kane claiming victory with 72% of the vote, defeating, uh, defeating Senate Majority Leader Troy Jackson in a landslide. Kane says if elected, her number one priority will be to make it easier for Mainers to succeed. Ultimately, however, the decision will be left up to voters in November's election. Live in Lewiston this morning, I'm Katie Thompson, WMTW News 8. Katie, thanks. And in Portland, residents have narrowly approved question one that temporarily blocks the sale of Congress Square Plaza. 51% voted in favor of the referendum, and that means the decision to sell Congress Square Plaza now goes back to City Council for another vote. Depending on the number of councilors who approve the sale, the public may get to vote on this issue again. And in the sheriff's races in Cumberland County, incumbent sheriff Kevin Joyce will keep his job with 59% of the vote, with 86% of the precincts reporting. Challenger Mike Eads got 41%. In York County, William King won the primary with 52% of the vote and 69% of the precincts reporting. Continuing the eight things that you need to know today, a major upset nationally, the second most powerful Republican in the House lost to an opponent with no political experience. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor fell to David Brad, an economics professor who has strong support from the Tea Party. Cantor had been seen as a favor to succeed John Bigner as Speaker of the House. Police have identified the victim in yesterday's school shooting outside of Portland, Oregon. 14-year-old Emilio Hoffman was killed when a fellow student opened fire. A teacher was also injured but is okay, we're told, and the suspected gunman is dead. Police have not released his name as of yet. Pentagon officials say five U.S. Special Operations troops died on Monday, likely from friendly fire. The troops reportedly were killed by a U.S. airstrike that was called in to help them during an ambush by the Taliban. If confirmed, it's one of the worst friendly fire incidents involving coalition forces since 2002. And finally this morning, United Airlines is the latest carrier to change the rules for frequent flyers. Instead of earning miles based on how much they fly, passengers will soon be rewarded for how much they pay.